Um, so I know we have some people here from that I know. Well, Matt's from my team too, so thank you for supporting me. Uh, you're new, hi, nice to meet you. Hi, Richard. Richard? Seal storage. Huh? Seal storage. Seal storage? Awesome. Okay, great. And then we have some Falcon Foundation folks. If you want to get the 101 to come and talk at the booth, this is your chance. Um, cool, so I'm going to run through um, really quickly, like give a gentle introduction to IPC. So IPC is this new uh, scalability layer that Falcon is building out now. Um, it's intended to be multi-chain. Um, these are all the quick points you see at the booth. Um, but yeah, it's meant to be multi-chain, so we'll target Falcon first, and then we'll expand it to support like Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin, these are the few on our list, and maybe Solana afterwards. Um, but we'll see how that goes, yeah. So I'm kind of going to run through like why we have this, some context setting, why it's important for the ecosystem, you know, we want the ecosystem to succeed. Um, and then spanning out further, like how can it actually, what does it actually contribute to the ecosystem of Web3 as a whole? So not just Falcon, right? Cool. Alright, so, uh, Falcon, Falcon Master Plan, I'm sure all of you guys know this. Um, I just want to set this as context because this is really where we started. Uh, we wanted to build the world's largest decentralized network. We've done that. Uh, we've been onboarding a ton of data. And then we wanted to enable compute, which we did. And so we enabled compute, but... So we enabled compute with the FBM. So Falcon Virtual Machine, this was launched last year. Uh, we've been, it's been a whole year. We have about... I'll show you the number of projects that are building on us right now and some examples, but it's been awesome. Um, it delivered on-chain programmability to the Falcon chain, which means that for the first time, you could actually do user-defined smart contracts on Falcon and build dApps, right? So we had dApps building. We had like what? Like, um, let me show this, right? We had about 70 plus projects that, you know, worked with us for about six months. They actually launched all the way to mainnet. 20 of them made it into an accelerator, which is pretty awesome, right? Um, but we also discovered some learnings, you know, that actually Matt just gave a really good talk around key learning points from our builder cohort. Um, we learned things like, if you want to build a dApp on Falcoin today, the block time is 30 seconds, right? And 30 seconds block time means that in your dApp, when users use it, it's going to be like 90 seconds for a transaction to run, which kind of is not great UX. Um, that was like the main thing. And then there are other things like cross-chain finality. Like if I want to use like the graph or chain link, right? It's going to take me about nine hours to get finality and get that transaction confirmed. So we wanted to build something that was a lot more scalable and can enable faster transactions, faster block time, more gas efficiency, um, basically surpassing the Falcon network, but then also enabling all the storage primitives from the Falcon network. So uh, unofficially, right, because Juan has not announced this, but as in he hasn't said this himself, but it's something that we think about, right? So we've enabled compute now, and now we're talking about en enabling high performing applications that surpass Web2 standards. So we don't want to just aim for um, reaching parity with Web3. We want to see how we can surpass Web3 and Web2 and deliver something really breakthrough to the whole um, internet economy. So now we have IPC. Um, as I showed earlier on, IPC stands for Interplanetary Consensus. Um, name might change, FYI, but for now it's a working title. Uh, we are like really, really focused on engineering right now. We've actually just launched our first customer. If any of you have been to Deep Inde, um, <clears throat> Fluent is a computerless, uh, cloudless compute that has now launched um, with building on IPC. So they actually use IPC to create their custom subnet and they are the first implementation of IPC. So it's actually workable today, right? Um, so the goal here is really to build a massively scalable custom network framework. Um, I know the scalability space has a lot of solutions right now, which are awesome. Um, but what we want to do is to offer something new, which is um, being hyper custom uh, customizable as a scalability solution. So you could change things like number of validators, the consensus, your security features. Um, there are a lot of promises here, and we're building it, them out one by one, and we'll show you what the progress is, and you can check out the roadmap on our docs. Cool, so as I mentioned earlier on, like we are aiming to, uh, to cover a lot of things in Web3. Here are some key things. So in the scalability space, there are a lot of things right now, right? Like you have rollups, you have side chains. Um, IPC is intended to be super flexible in the sense that you could design a rollup, you could design a side chain, you could design a state channel using the IPC framework. Uh, we use Tendermint Core under the hood, um, as, but we don't use the Cosmos SDK as of now so that we can keep the application logic framework um, agnostic. So you could use any language that you prefer to write the application logic that you want. Um, so that's how we're thinking of IPC today. Uh, we have programmability, programmability there, and we're hoping to be able to provide um, different customizations across all these different features in Web3 today. Okay, so um, 
kind of giving you a sense of what subnets are. So subnets are the way that we think of you customizing your own chain. So it's meant to be permissionless, which means that anyone can set up their own subnet. Um, if you run a subnet, you can determine the number of validators and all the other features I mentioned earlier on. Um, the way that we see this working is that it's super cheap to create. You could spin one up. You could also shut it down, right? So if you want to spin one up and run your transaction load, uh, maybe for a game instance, you could spin it up and then you could shut it down after maybe that whole game tournament is done, which then saves you a ton of like gas costs, right? And it also keeps your network more performant. Um, we also think about horizontal and vertical scaling. So we know some um, solutions out there for scalability today focus on either one. We want to be able to provide both. And the reason why we want to do this is because that's really the way that your ecosystem can scale. Right? So if you want to shard your ecosystem, um, you're building on an L1 of your choice. If, if you trust the L1, and you trust the security features there, these actually get inherited onwards to the subnets that you create. So we think of this as the parent, we think of this as the child, and you can continue building down below. So that's the vertical scaling. You could go really, really deep, and you could have L3 plus and so on. Of course, there are trade-offs like, you know, your security might be weakened as you go along, um, but you could maybe spin up an L3, shut it down, and then keep to your L2 main subnet. Um, you can also scale horizontally. So in a game scenario, for example, um, you want to leverage a database subnet that you know really focuses on storing data, retrieving data, and then you want to do a very seamless cross-chain call to your gaming subnet, which then runs all the, the live interactions for your game. You could do that with IPC. And if, let's say, you had additional um, ask, like uh, hyper-customized regional subnets that you want to run because of GDPR, for example, you could do so by running different subnets in different countries as well. So this gives you the options to really play around. Um, the goal here is also to be cross-chain and cross-net. So if you run off what, a single L1, of course, today you can seamlessly, already today, you can actually seamlessly do cross-net communication. Um, but if you want to run a whole application, a whole ecosystem, eventually we're also working on enabling cross-chain really quickly so that, it, honestly, it's about chain abstraction today. It's about my time chain. We want to target the future and make it happen. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah? In what? <coughs> the L1 there is Ethereum, right? Uh, so right now it's targeting Filecoin. Oh, okay. Today. Uh, it's also Ethereum compatible because FBM is EVM compatible. So you can use Ethereum as well. Um, we haven't built for Bitcoin yet. Yeah. Yeah, so we're starting there. But the good news is we haven't even launched a testnet, but we're already like good with Filecoin and Ethereum. Yeah. Cool. So um, just to run through... <coughs> Yeah, so I gave you a sense of horizontal scaling and uh, vertical scaling, so this is how it works. I'm sure these concepts are pretty good with you guys. Um, and then just running through how this, <clears throat> how this can run. So if you come in as a validator, you could set um, either you require collateral for validators to join, which honestly is recommended, or it could be static, which means that um, you, know, you stake your initial collateral and you don't add any, any further on from that. Or it could be fully permissioned, where you only want certain addresses to be validators. So you can, it's really up to you to choose. Um, and then. Based on that, we also have general message passing, which is the cross-net and cross-chain communication I was talking about earlier on. Um, you can do top-down interactions and bottom-up interactions. So um, your child subnet can always interact your parent subnet and all the way up to your L1 um, and then downwards as well. Right? Um, the way that we do chain state, uh, check, we do it via checkpointing. So you can set it such that like every 30 seconds or every hour or so, you will checkpoint the entire state of your subnet onto your parent subnet and it goes all the way up. Um, under the hood, uh, I didn't show this on the architecture diagram, but we run IPLD. So IPLD is really efficient for storage. Um, if you store a chain state, um, we actually store it as a graph so that you, it's, it's way more efficient to store. Uh, messages are stored as a content ID, so you can always um, just store the metadata of your messages within the CID. Store it as a hash, so you don't have to store the entire message. So, then, so we're taking some learning from Falcoin into IPC. Yeah. Okay, so that kind of gives you the TLDR for IPC as a whole. Um, if you want to know more, we're still in kind of stealth. We're not really out yet, um, but you can follow our docs and you can join our early builders program. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>